Hey Astra Kids and welcome back. This is your May 2021 horoscope for Capricorn Moon or Capricorn Ascendant. Hey Astra Kids and welcome back. This is your May 2021 horoscope. So, starting off here in the month of May, on the 1st, we have Mercury shifting into the sign of Taurus. So, Mercury is now leaving behind Aries, which is this very active, adventurous, lively energy that we t discussed back in the month of April. April. So as we've been going through this transit of Mercury and Aries, there's been energy all over the place. This has been crazy as Mars and Mercury are not friends. Mercury and Venus, however, are great friends. And so as Mercury comes into the sign of Taurus, this grounds this energy. This makes this more practical where this logic, this communication becomes much more grounded. We're able to navigate this energy much better here where you will feel this groundedness coming into the month of May. Now, along with that, Uranus will meet up with the sun on the first as well for those of you who are following those three extra planets. And so this is an interesting energy as our consciousness is being exploded through this Uranus transit. So this is a great time for this flash of inspiration, this insight where we can see these unexpected changes coming in through our consciousness, through our awareness. Now, moving forward here to the 4th of May. May the 4th be with you. Venus is shifting ahead into the sign of Taurus, where we'll meet up in this conjunction with Mercury. This is a great influence. Here we can see the communication style. We can see the way of conveying logic and understanding coming into this peaceful, more grounded energy as Venus is at home here in the sign of Taurus and giving the support, giving the aid to Mercury as well. This is a great transit for practice thinking for decision making for negotiating as we're going through this transit here of Mercury and Venus in Taurus along with that Mercury is going to meet up with Rahu later on here on the fourth as well this is a great position also as Mercury and Rahu are friendly to one another to a certain extent this will give great aspiration, great inspiration towards thinking, towards researching, towards collecting data and information. Remember that Rahu is a planet of obsession. And so Rahu is also connected to technology. It is connected to research. And so anyone who is planning on learning a new subject, anyone who is planning on doing deep research, anything that is involved in writing, this is a great time as Rahu is going to blow up this Mercury energy where this gives us a tremendous amount of curiosity, a tremendous amount of communication that we can use at this time. On the 13th of May, Venus will also meet up with Rahu. Venus and Rahu are great friends to one another. Venus, of course, because it is the planet of luxury, of beauty, of wealth, of attraction, and Rahu, again, being this planet of obsession. It wants more. It wants to gain something. It is an ambitious planet. And so Rahu and Venus get together and the things that you want to achieve, the things that you want to gain and attract into your life, this amplifies this, this gives you the ambition to achieve these things that you would like. And so you can see, especially for those of you who have Venus placed in a good condition within your chart. This gives you the ability to acquire the wealth, to acquire the luxury, to acquire the possessions that you are looking towards throughout this transit here in the month of May. As we move forward on the 14th of May, the sun will shift into Taurus, marking a new focus, a new center of consciousness. As we are putting our focus now into this more stable, more grounded, more peaceful energy. Remember that the sun was exalted 
resulted in Aries where we had all of this energy we had all of this drive all of this liveliness now as the Sun comes into its enemy sign of Taurus this is where the Sun loses its energy because remember that the Sun and Venus are not friends so here the Sun is calm down and slowed down in the sign of Taurus where this is a great time to relax to go inward to ground yourself to slow all of this energy down and to really bring yourself back into the present moving forward here on the 18th of may venus will meet up with mercury once again so this is a huge time here again of this communication where we're using our speech in a beautiful peaceful way so this is great for communication this is great for writing this is great for negotiation any deal making that you are trying to get across during this time Moving forward here on the 19th of May, the sun will meet up with Rahu. So now we're getting closer to this eclipse season as the sun is coming closer to the position of Rahu. And remember that wherever Rahu is, it is going to explode. It's going to give this illusion of this bigger image or this bigger illusion than what it may seem to be and so here we want to be careful as Rahu can explode the ego this can give a strong sense of self and so this is where we can see a lot of ego issues coming up with Rahu here with the Sun this is a great time for confidence this is a great time for stepping up and moving forward taking the risk taking the action to get the things done that you want in your life but once again be careful of that expansion that explosion of the ego that can take place here during this transit now all of these planets of the sun of venus of rahu of mercury are all going to receive a fourth aspect over from jupiter and aquarius so this is really going to expand the knowledge expand the insight again with all of these placements there's so much brilliance there's so much practicality here where we can use this knowledge in a more grounded way in a more practical way towards our goals towards the things that we want to get done as this energy is slowed down it's calmed down here in the sign of Taurus on the 23rd of May Saturn will station retrograde and we will talk about this in a future video but this is a major time of going back and looking over the structures looking over the routines looking at the things that you have in place and making sure that you have the proper discipline that you have the proper order the proper structure in your life this also affects us collectively as Saturn is a societal planet this is all about the structure the rules that are put in place here in our physical construct moving forward on the 26th of may mercury will shift into gemini into its own sign and so here the intellect is very high this becomes a strong position of communication of writing of connecting to others of pulling in information from different places and you can feel the curiosity you can feel the adventure starting to increase here of wanting to learn wanting to explore more where this can really help in expanding your knowledge depending on where mercury is positioned in your chart on the 28th of may venus will shift into the sign of gemini as well where it will meet up with mercury once again so again this communication style of negotiating of making peace of resolving issues of being able to make deals continues to increase here with this aspect this conjunction between venus and mercury on the 29th we will see mercury station retrograde as well so we will get into that in a future video a lot of major things that are coming here now for the position of the moon i will talk about that in a future video but major moments that we will go through here are on the 11th of may when we will have a new moon in the kritika Naksatra. so this will fall at the end of the sign of aries and this will be an interesting one as it will be in a conjunction with uranus we will talk more about that in a future video also we have the big event of the full moon lunar eclipse happening in anarada in the sign of scorpio here on may 26 so that is a huge event as that will shift us into eclipse season 
starting off here for those of you with a Capricorn moon or Capricorn ascendant. We have Mercury, Venus, and the Sun, which will be shifting out of your fourth house and into your fifth house. This is a major time of creativity, of self expression, as all of these ideas, all of these things that you've collected here in the fourth house is going to play a huge role into what you are creating, what you're developing, what you will bring about in your career as this will aspect over to your 11th house of your gains. And so this is a huge time of working towards projects with all of this Mercury, Venus, and Sun activity. There's going to be a huge amount of creativity, especially as this is happening in the sign of Taurus. Now, all of this will come into contact with Rahu as well, which will explode this energy, this Rahu activation expanding and blowing up this creativity, giving you a great amount of ambition and drive to work towards these goals that you have, these big projects that you have in store. And especially as Jupiter will be giving its fifth aspect over from your second house. This is fantastic. This is giving you the resources, the rational thinking that you need to work towards this creativity, to work towards perfecting these skills at this time, using the knowledge, using what you have to move towards your goals. Now we'll also see Mercury and Venus will shift ahead into the sign of Gemini there in your sixth house. And so once again, this becomes work oriented where you can use this creativity, you can use these skills that you have to create something big at this time and pulling from that 12th house in opposition, using your imagination, using your creativity to fuel this ability to craft and work towards these skills that you have as this Mercury and Venus activity moves into your sixth house, this is awesome as Mercury is a friend to your ruler Saturn. And so this is going to give you a tremendous amount of strength to push through and get done a lot of work in this time. Remember that this is your sixth house where you will have to remain disciplined and patient and put in the dedication to get these things done. Now we're also going to see Mercury station retrograde when it comes into the sign of Gemini here towards the end of May. And so this is going to give you even deeper amount of intellect and skills to tap into as this Mercury stations retrograde. You want to be careful though of any sort of deals, anything that is involving writing things down as this is your sixth house where there can be some conflicts, some legal issues that can come up here with this Mercury retrograde. We're also going to see Saturn station retrograde as well. And this will happen in your first house. So this is a huge moment of growth, of maturity, of improving and bettering yourself. Once again, this Saturn energy has been sitting here for so long in your first house, giving you this great amount of practicality and this ability to mature and grow and develop into what you want to Build in terms of your reputation, your career, and especially as this is your chart ruler, this is giving you a tremendous amount of power. And with that rulership of Saturn over your second house, where this is bringing in a lot of wealth and security in terms of building up your career, building up your reputation, building up these areas with this Saturnian influence. And so this is a huge time of continuing to grow, continuing to build continuing to patiently put all of these steps in play with this Saturn retrograde. We will also see a new moon in the Kritika Naksatra. So this will fall in the sign of Aries towards the end there. And this will be an interesting one as it comes into a conjunction with Uranus. And so this will be a new moon that we will talk about in a future video. But very important as this is happening in your fourth house, a Kendra house, where this new moon is going to affect you greatly in terms of new opportunities. There may be some things in terms of moving, relocating, thinking about traveling as that fourth house of home is going to be where this new moon is activated. 
Now, following that, towards the end of the month, we will also see the big event of the full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio. So we'll talk more about that in a future video, but this is a full moon happening back in your 11th house, where this is a huge opportunity for growth and gains in your life. That moon is going to be most powerful as it will be a full moon bringing in great abundance in that 11th house of gains. So this is a huge month for you to grow, for you to work towards your career, your goals, your ambitions. This is hugely highlighted coming into the month of May for those of you with the Capricorn moon, Capricorn ascendant. To finish it off, for those of you with a Capricorn moon, Capricorn lagna, I pulled some cards from the Vedic astrology deck. First card that comes up here is Rahu. Once again, this is a huge time of ambition, of striving towards your goals, your achievements, a lot that you can succeed in at this time. Remember that Rahu is the planet that pulls us into the Maya, into the illusion. It gives us the results of the material world. And so this is a huge time of your success, your ambition, all of this coming into this moment here in the month of May. Next card here is Aries. Once again, your passion, your creativity, your ideas, full speed ahead, taking you towards your goals, your ambitions, your achievements. You have the power to really succeed and conquer in this month of May, especially as we see this new moon that will happen here in the sign of Aries in your fourth house, a Kendra house, very powerful. This new moon is giving you tremendous amount of strength to move into a new direction of success and fortune. Next card here is the first house. Once again, this is a time where you have been working on yourself with that Saturn stationed there in your first house along with Pluto, which are both retrograde here in the month of May. So this is a huge transformation and growth process that you're going through within yourself. Remember that that first house is your identity. So there's a lot that's being shifted and changing and that you are growing and finding yourself through this Saturn retrograde that we will see here in the month of May. Next card is the Hasta Noxatcher. Once again, your skills, your abilities, what you want to achieve is huge at this time, that Hasta Noxatcher being represented by the hands, working with the hands, writing, using your skills, using the knowledge that you have to work in service to get things done. This is a huge time of your success, your accomplishments coming to fruition, especially with our next card here being the Maganak Satra, that throne where you will receive the success that you are searching for. This will require some sacrifice, though. Remember that that Maganak Satra is a K2 ruled Nak Satra, K2 being a planet of great loss. And so this is a time where you have to release and let go of the things that are in the way, making room for that success to come forward at this time. Again, that fourth house is going to be huge where there's a lot that's being cleared out through this full moon and coming into this new moon here in that fourth house. So think back to the full moon in Libra that we had at the end of this month of April and how that is impacting this new journey, this new beginning that is happening there in your fourth house. A lot that is also being cleared out through this Scorpio full moon lunar eclipse there in your 11th house, where you can see a lot of success coming through. Next card here being the Chitra Naksatra. Once again, all of these cards really pointing towards wealth, pointing towards achievements at this time. Remember that the Chitra Naksatra is a facade, an illusion of the glamour, of the glitz, of what looks nice, what looks pretty. And so keep that in mind that are the things that you're going after, are they just surface level? Are they just for the material look of it? Or is this actually going to benefit you? But great success where you will definitely see these things come forth. Rahu will bring you the illusion of the success, of the material things, of the things that look good. So this becomes a big question of what is the illusion and what is really what you want to accomplish. Last card here is a Virgo. And so this is a huge time, once again, of paying close attention to the details 
with that Mercury retrograde that will happen there in your sixth house, where this is a huge time of really paying close attention to anything involving communication, writing, any sort of details that you need to look closely at the fine print and make sure that everything is properly in order as it should be. This has been your May 2021 horoscope for Capricorn Moon, Capricorn Ascendant. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like as well as a comment. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe button along with the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new content. We have a lot to talk about as we are coming close to this eclipse season that will start off with that full moon lunar eclipse in Scorpio. So you don't want to miss out on that. Make sure you are hitting that notification bell. If you are interested in learning more on Vedic astrology in depth, there is a course available in the Facebook group, Astrology Lessons with Daquan Jones. All of the information for that is down below in the description along with the comments. I want to thank you all so much for joining and I will see you all in the next video.